Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels, and this week, two related parables, the lost sheep and the lost coin. The parable of the coin is only found in the Gospel of Luke, while the parable of the lost sheep is found in both Luke and Matthew. First, the sheep. What think you? If a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them should go astray, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the mountains, and go to seek that which has gone astray? And if it so be that he find it, amen, I say to you, he rejoiceth more for that than for the ninety-nine that went not astray. Matthew eighteen twelve to 14 This telling of the parable is pretty straightforward. This man takes care of his animals, and if he loses one, it's a source of immense relief to find it again and know that it's safe. Also, it's possible he may really care about the well-being of his sheep on an emotional level, though that's not explicitly spelled out in these verses. What man of you that hath a hundred sheep, and if he shall lose one of them, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the desert, and go after that which was lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, lay it upon his shoulders, rejoicing, and coming home, call together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me! because I have found my sheep that was lost. Luke 15, 4-6 Of course, leaving sheep alone in the desert is just inviting all of them to go wandering off too, but that's the sort of risk that shepherds often had to take in recovering a sheep if it ran off in those days. In any case, finding a lost sheep is more difficult than keeping track of a stationary flock, and is more likely to be on the shepherd's thoughts until he recovers the one that was lost. People are like this with all kinds of possessions. The one thing I think we would have difficulty sympathizing with today is for a man to throw a party with all of his buddies because of a recovered sheep, but Jerusalem was a more social atmosphere than modern society is, so even that is understandable. Or what woman, having ten groats, if she lose one groat, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently until she find it? And when she hath found it, call together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the groat which I had lost. Luke 15, 8-9. The word being translated groats here is in the Latin drachmas. Now drachmas were Greek coins of considerable but not excessive value, about the same as the daily wages of a soldier, which could mean that in terms of the attachment a woman might have to it, it could have been about worth the equivalent of a hundred to two hundred dollars. So we can picture a woman who had twenty hundred dollar bills and lost two of them and perhaps was worried she wouldn't be able to pay for food this month, though in the context in which this was originally written, wages tended to be handed out every day, so expenses probably would have been handled differently. She was worried, she thought she might have to sell something to make up the difference, and then suddenly she finds it and invites her friends over to tell them the whole story so they can share in her relief at finding it and talk the experience over. I think the second story sounds stranger to modern ears since we don't use valuable coins very much anymore, or even paper money. We hear that she called her friends to celebrate finding her coin, and we think, yeah, Cheryl, I found a penny in the parking lot this morning too. Can I get back to what I was doing? This part of the story makes a lot more sense when the lost item is known to be quite valuable. In both cases, the message of the story is the same. God pursues people more strongly if they're further separated from him and celebrates more when a sinner repents, so we shouldn't be surprised or upset when God is eager to forgive people who've done horrible things but have repented. Forgiveness, especially of someone who was lost, is a wonderful thing, especially when it helps them to return to a faithful life and gets them back on the path to an eternal life. Next, the prodigal son. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.